Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking to you about some forbidden romances. This is actually my sixth forbidden romance recommendation video. Um, so I'll link a playlist that I'm going to be making if future Avery remembers um, down below for y'all to check out filled with all of my romance recommendations featuring the forbidden trope. So let's get started. I have 10 books to recommend today. First is definitely a very forbidden one. This is The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan. Our heroine of the story, I believe is in her 40s, if I'm not mistaken, and she just went through a divorce after she found out that her husband was cheating on her. She decides to feel herself. Like she gets some work done. She wants to feel more confident about herself and her body. And so this book starts out with her lounging outside by the pool, but she may or may not be wearing a top, okay? And she doesn't know that it's the pool boy's day to come and clean the pool. And so the pool boy sees her in her clothesless glory. <laughs> um, but the pool boy just so happens to also be the heroine's best friend's son. And uh, they are very attracted to each other, let's just say that, and deeper feelings develop after that point, but they have to keep it a secret because of the circumstances that is her best friend's son. And she would feel so heartbroken if her best friend found out. But then she starts developing real feelings for him and she's like, what am I supposed to do? what is going on. So this is an age gap romance that I thoroughly enjoyed and the taboo like sneaking around forbidden aspect whew, was so hot. Next I have Focused by Carla Sorensen. This is the romance between Molly and Noah. So Molly ends up being hired to work on the Washington Wolves football team where Noah is a player, a newly hired player transferred to this team and she has been asked to help work on this film kind of surrounding him and what he's gone through. But what her boss doesn't know is that Molly has a little bit of history with Noah. They actually lived like in the same neighborhood, I think same street close to one another. And um, Noah was significantly older than Molly, but he didn't know. One day she crawled into his window and things started happening, but nothing like actually happened because people intervened. But if like people found out about the situation, it could be trouble for Noah because he didn't realize that she was underage. So the two of them haven't really spoke since that day. It's been years later. Molly's like a full grown adult in her twenties. She finds herself falling for Noah all over again, even though she does not want to because of the way that he treated this whole situation that happened in the past. Same goes with Noah. He is like mortified to see Molly again and does not care to be around because of the jeopardy she put him in. However, uh, with them spending more time together, he finally gets to know Molly and falls for her. Their romance is forbidden because they work together. And I think both of them had to sign like a contract that there would be like no fraternization or specifically Molly did. I can't remember off the top of my head, but since they work together, it's very forbidden and they do have to keep their relationship a secret. Next, I have Heavy Crown by Sophie Lark. I do have a copy of this book, but it's like all the way at the bottom of a stack over there. I do have this book. This is the last book in the Brutal Birthright series. This is the romance between Sebastian and Yelena. They're actually from rivaling mafia families and their two fathers do not get along. I think Sebastian's from the Irish mafia, I wanna say, his family is. And Yelena is the daughter to the head of a Russian mafia. Um, their fathers do not get along whatsoever, but Sebastian saves Yelena one night from a almost like kidnapping situation. They have not stopped thinking about each other since that night, um, but there's definitely more to this story, but their relationship is forbidden. They have to sneak around a lot, like many of these other books, because their families are rivals. And I do recommend reading these books in the series in order, because you get why their relationship is so forbidden when you read the other books before this one. This is the last book. Next, I have Scarred by Emily McIntyre. This is a part of a series that are filled with like retellings of like villains getting with people. Okay, so this one is about Scar. It's a retelling of The Lion King. So Scar and Sarah B, Sarabi <laughs> um, from The Lion King. And so yeah, this one is forbidden because Sarah B or Sarah in this book um, she is actually engaged to marry Scar's older brother who is going to be king of this land and Scar is going to try everything possible to overthrow him and like make the people hate him and rebel against him like secretly. Once he sees Sarah, he has set his sights on her. He is like determined to make her his. At first, just like ruin her for his brother, um, but then he actually wants her as his. So um, there is points in here where they get together though before he can take his brother out of the picture and whew, 
It's so hot. It's so good. If you're looking for more of a college romance, I have Catch and Cradle by Katya Rose. This is a actually lacrosse romance. So you don't see a lot of those in the sports romance sphere. In romance books, you don't see a lot of lacrosse. Um, but our two heroines in here, this is a sapphic romance. They go to this uh, college in Canada and they're both on the lacrosse team. And they both have been secretly pining after one another. However, that's not allowed. Like there's a strict no dating teammate policy on this team because of something that happened years ago to two players. So there's like this big rule of you cannot date each other because of some drama that happened in the past. So this is about the captain of this team, our heroine right here, and um, one of the players named Hope right here. There's also great dyslexia representation. Hope has dyslexia. And I really loved um, the older heroine, sorry, I can't remember her name right now, but I loved the discussion of her and like being really confused on what she wants to do with her life. And she was a senior in college. Like she was like, I don't think I want to do what I want to do. And oh, I really understood that. So hardcore. <laughs> You're like told when you're 18, you got to pick your major and figure out what you want to do with your life. And it's so hard. Like I'm 18. I don't know what to, what I want to do with the rest of my life. And so I really felt for the heroine of this book because when my senior year hit, I was like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. But you're kind of stuck because you paid all this money to get to this point. <laughs> anyway, um, I really related to this book. Um, and I really loved this forbidden aspect as well. There's like stolen touches and glances between the two. Like whew. my next one is Disgrace by Brittany Cherry. This is a small town romance and the heroine is the preacher's daughter in this small town. And this is her romance with the town bad boy. Grace is the heroine's name and she ended up moving back to her small town after she found out that her husband had cheated on her. And she just can't really find her way in life. She doesn't really feel comfortable around anybody. And then she bumps into the town bad boy Jackson one day and she realizes she's finally found her spark in life when she talks to him. And at first they kind of use each other in a physical aspect to escape their troubled lives, but then real feelings start developing between the two of them, obviously. And when that starts happening, there you have to keep the relationship a secret. There's one scene that I specifically remember where like they cannot really be out together in public because like people would notice in this small town, it's very much like gossipy small town. <laughs> and so they go to this bookstore, they would love to go together, but they can't. Um, and so they leave like notes in books throughout the store for each other when they go into the bookstore. Like, it's so cute. If you want a novella, I have Winter Ward by Cassie Min. Our hero of the story, his name is Felix, and he's a very talented classical musician, um, but he's kind of lost his muse and like he hasn't written anything in a while and he feels very lost. And then one of his old friends um, calls him up and asks for a favor, asks if his 20 year old daughter who is studying music can come stay with him over winter break um, because I think she wants to stay in Germany for the break. And that's where the hero lives and he reluctantly agrees at first and he just is assuming that she's just gonna stay in her room or that part of the house never really gonna come in contact with her um, but she's so excited to meet this guy and to learn from the best so then when she gets there she realizes this man is very grumpy and isn't really all that interested in helping her and this is their romance it is forbidden because he is significantly older than her like that's her dad's friend and that's all i want to say about that one because this is a novella and i don't want to spoil anything because it's fairly short if you would like a historical romance i have dangerous duke by scarlett scott so our hero in here he actually works for the league of dukes which is that's the title of this series is the league of duke series and they're basically like guys who helped the crown in some way when it comes to like detective work and the queen uh granted them like t duke titles because of all the help they've done to help the monarchy and keeping some terrorists at bay and so uh the duke of strathmore his name is griffin has been accused of a crime and he's actually under house arrest with a different duke in a different duke's home. And this is his romance with that duke who hates his guts, his sister. And Griffin first sees Violet, his captor's sister. He at first sees her as this means to an end. He decides he's going to seduce her and convince her to help him escape and like run away together to get married when he does not want that at all, but he's gonna trick her basically. But he gets to know her more. When they finally do escape together, he just decides, oh, I'm never gonna tell her I had this plan because I fell for her anyway. She ends up finding out and uh, who doggy, like it's not a good fight between the two of them because she fully believed that he 
loved her, which he does now. But at first, when they first get together, their romance is quite forbidden because they're living under the same roof as her brother who absolutely hates this man. Another historical is To Catch an Earl by Kay Bateman. This one's very interesting. It kind of reminds me of um, that serial killer romance that people are loving by S.D. Abbey. I don't remember the name of it, um, but kind of like historical, but she's not killing anybody. She's a jewel thief instead. <laughs> so the heroine is the daughter to this very renowned jewel thief and she's kind of taken over his title and she's stealing jewels from the rich who that for who stole them from like their original owners um a lot of like native folk and so she is going to steal them back and give them back to them and our hero in here alex is like a detective and he is uh determined to find this person who is stealing jewels and little does he know that emmy is that person because he ends up falling for this woman without realizing that she is the person that he is hunting down. I would say this book is forbidden more on the heroine's part than the hero because he doesn't really know what's going on, but the heroine like has to keep her distance because she realizes that this hero is hunting her essentially. Um, but she is stealing these jewels for a good cause and isn't going to let a man come in between them. And the last one that I have is a monster romance. This is The Orc from the Office by Kate Pryor. Um, so if you can tell, this is an office romance. So um, basically humans and monsters live together in like harmony in our world set in this book. The heroine of the story, she works in an office and her filing cabinet is jammed one day and the hero who works in IT, who's an orc hero, ends up walking by her and realizes that she needs help. So he decides to help her with the filing cabinet, but she's like, oh no, I got it. And in the midst of her like trying to open it, she like hits him in the face on accident with her elbow and he starts gushing blood. Uh, little does the heroine know though, that's how the orc mating ritual starts is by the female drawing blood from her fated mate and thus starts a fated mate bond between the two, which is not very good for the workplace. Um, so the romance is forbidden because like you have like HR involved being like, uh, y'all are not supposed to be together. What is going on? <laughs> like, so it's really fun. I really enjoy this one. If you just need a quick, short, fun little read. I definitely recommend this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances with the forbidden trope. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a jewel emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.